Hey guys, welcome back to Hype Oregon. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about things that I wish I had known before I went backpacking in the Sierra Nevada. If you are new here, welcome. I make hiking and backpacking vlogs as well as gear reviews and general tips and tricks videos to help you become a more confident hiker and backpacker. If you enjoy content like that, click that red subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are notified every time I make a new video. And if you want more content from me, you can support me over on Patreon where for as little as $1, you can get two to three extra videos a month. Okay, so let's get into it. I wrote down a list of things that I wish I had known before before I went backpacking in the Sierra and my friend who planned the trip and went on the trip with me, she wrote down some things as well that I will be putting in the video. So I have backpacked in Yosemite before when I was a teenager and we had quite a bad bear experience. And so knowing that the bears in California are definitely more used to people and a little more aggressive than the bears here in Oregon, I was very concerned, especially, you know, being out in the back country and having to carry the bear canister and just like there's bear lockers everywhere and just that kind of protocol really kind of had me on edge and pretty concerned. So I wish I had known how small the bears were, especially in that area, the bears that we saw were no bigger than a large dog. Now, you know, a bear of any size can do lots of damage, could kill you. It definitely didn't scare me as much after seeing how small they were and we didn't have any bad bear experiences so that was good I wish I had known that because prior to the trip I was very anxious about it next thing I wish I had known was how difficult the terrain would be I knew how much elevation and stuff we were gaining every day but I guess unless you know the terrain you don't really know how difficult it's gonna be I watched a few videos of the area but again video doesn't portray how hard that is same with the PCT through hikers you know uh, a chunk of our loop was on the Pacific Crest Trail. I didn't really realize what they go through when they go into the Sierra. It's really, really rough. Coming from a place where I live at a 400 feet elevation, our highest elevation was 12,000 feet. Granted, we gained that slowly and I never got altitude sickness or anything like that, but I could tell my breathing, like summiting Glen Pass, I could tell, I mean, I had to stop every couple of steps because I just could not get all the oxygen and it was very very hard the terrain is rough it doesn't matter how popular the hike is the terrain is hard yeah just don't underestimate the sierra i would say this was the hardest hike that i've ever done to date another thing i wish i had known was how warm it would be in august even at high elevations i was so surprised we camped at over 10,000 feet and it was so hot at night. I packed my warm sleeping bag. I totally overpacked. Wasn't necessary at all. I think I even brought my liner. Totally not necessary and I wish I had known that because I could have saved a couple of pounds not taking my super heavy duty synthetic sleeping bag. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was thinking, cause I've camped here in Oregon in August at 8,500 feet, I think was the highest I camped and I was freezing. It was like 15 or 18 degrees or something, very cold in August at 8,500 feet. I mean, it makes sense because we are so far north compared to where we were down there in California, but still I'm thinking, okay, t over 10,000 feet, we're gonna be camping at this lake. Like it's gonna be cold. No, nope, wasn't at all. I could have brought my minimal sleeping bag. I did not need to bring the liner. Wish I'd known that, know it for next time. Another thing is I wish I'd known about the thunderstorms. Man, in August, apparently the Sierra is known for thunderstorms every afternoon. I did not know this. I wish I had because it made for a little bit of a stressful hike in the sense that every day we had to deal with these thunderstorms, sometimes as early as 1 to 2 p.m. And that kind of ties into something that my friend wrote on her list, and that is don't wait to set up 
camp. Huge tip. If you are hiking there in August when there are thunderstorms, don't wait to set up camp. Even if it's blue sky over here and it's sunny and warm, literally within 10 minutes, it can be dumping rain or hailing and uh, you don't want to be without your shelter or scrambling to set up your shelter in the middle of a storm like that. So that is very, very important and a tip that I highly recommend. Okay, let's move on to my friend Holly's list. One thing on her list was she was surprised at how, and I was too, at how much the bear canister changed the way the backpack felt on our backs. And we had hiked with our bear canisters before. We have both done the Rogue River Trail. However, that was a three-day trip. So our bear canisters were not heavy at all. The Ray Lake Sloop was a six-day trip. So we had six days worth of food stuffed in those canisters. They were full to the brim, super, super, super heavy. And because we overpacked our packs a little bit, not knowing, you know, all this stuff about the weather and how not cold it was going to be, our packs were full. The bear canisters were squished in there and they really, really hurt our backs. You know, there was days where I didn't pack it right or shifted or something and it would just dig into my lower back and we have full suspension backpacks like we have the osprey aura we both do and they are like mesh suspension like super fancy and it still hurt our backs so that's something to know if you are going to be hiking in the sierra try out your pack maybe on a few day hikes with the loaded bear can don't just put the bear can in there empty because you won't feel it as much load the bear can with all the food and wear your pack and see how it feels if it's super uncomfortable you know rearrange repack once you're on a trip it's really hard to do that because you can't just like get rid of things so we definitely wish we had known about that now we know we can do it better next time holly put on her list raincoats are necessary yes you are hiking in the summer yes you probably don't need a raincoat or you don't think you need a raincoat it is so necessary the thunderstorms come with rain and they can last anywhere from 10 minutes to five hours and yes even in august it will rain and it is really great to have a raincoat she did not bring hers on a day where we didn't set up camp in time and we were trying to wait out the storm uh we thought it was just gonna la you know pass but it just kept coming kept coming and uh she was huddled under her rain fly her tent rain fly so at least she had that that was good but a raincoat is necessary and the last thing on her list was don't wait to jump in the lake just do it don't wait for like prime weather or this or that or let's do this first or this first just jump in if you want to swim just jump in that is one thing neither one of us did on the whole ray lake sloop trip is we did not swim in any of the lakes because by the time we got to camp we were so exhausted and waiting out storms and then it was dinner time and then this and then that just do it if you want to swim at your lunch spot lunch break enjoy that just do it enjoy it you're not there just to like do the miles and then get to camp like enjoy the trip enjoy the scenery if you want to swim at your lunch lake spot take an extra 30 minutes grab your towel jump in the lake so those are all the things we wish we had known before backpacking in the Sierra. If you have backpacked in the Sierra, I would love to hear in the comments below what are some of the lessons that you learned during your trip that you think others should know before going. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day and I will catch you on the next adventure.